Okay, here's some more uh, notes on this particle motion question here. And we're on letter E for what values of T does a particle change direction. So it's going to change direction. It has to stop in order to change directions. In other words, if my particle is moving to the right and then it wants to go to the left before it can stop from going to the right, and before it can change from moving to the right to the left, it's got to stop. So how, how, how do we know what happens when it stops? What's happened when it stops? The velocity is zero when it stops, okay? So we want to find out when the velocity is zero. And that's going to tell us when it stops. And so what is my velocity? So my velocity as a function of time is just the derivative. So that's going to be 2t minus 4. And we just set that equal to zero. Add 4 to both sides. So 2t equals 4. So t equals 2. So it changes directions at 2 seconds, actually. And we want to know for what values of t does a particle change the directions? What changes directions when t is 2 seconds? So I guess that's E. Well, we're not too sure now. Sometimes it can stop and keep going, so we might want to check that. So let's, let's make a little line graph here. Let's call this the velocity as a function of time. And this might be, this would be 0 because we already started at 0 and this is 2. And let's just figure out what our, what's our velocity uh, at 1. And at 1, the velocity is negative. That means I'm moving to the left. And then at 3, this is at 1. And at 3, what's my velocity? Well, if I put 3 in here, my velocity would be 6 is positive. So that's really what's happening. So I'm moving to the left here. And here I'm moving to the right. Okay, because if the velocity is positive, I'm moving to the right. If the velocity is negative, I'm moving to the left. Or if I was on a vertical line, this would be up, this would be down. So we do change direction. So we, we want to check that because the particle could, could be moving here, stop, and then keep moving and did not change directions. It just stopped for a moment. Okay. All right. And then letter, oh, well, we already got letter F. Letter F, during what time intervals is the move, particle moving right? Well, this is letter F. And it's moving right when it's positive, so that time interval would be from 2 to infinity. And I guess G is during what time intervals is the particle moving left. So that's going to be... So this little line graph kind of helps us with that. Zero to two. And so it's moving left. So moving right and left. Okay, so those are easy. H, where is the particle when it changes directions? Well, this is the when. If I know the when, I can always find the where because the position function will give me the where. So, for letter H, what we want to do is we just put S of 2, and that's going to tell me where it is at T equals 2. And I think we already found that out. Well, we found part of that out when we were doing displacement, so we'll just put 2 in here, so that's going to be 2 squared. That's going to be 4 minus 8 plus 3, which is going to be negative 1. So it's going to be at negative 1 meters. So that's where the position will be at negative 1 meters. Okay. All right, and then letter I. When is the speed increasing? And J, when is the speed decreasing? So what we have to do now is we have to compare the acceleration and the velocity. So we'll draw two graphs here. First, the velocity. And we already know the velocity is, starts at 2. We already know the velocity is negative from 0 to 2 and positive from 2 to infinity. Now let's check the acceleration.
So the acceleration has a function of time. So, a full paw there. Well, we know the acceleration is what? Well, we found it earlier that the acceleration, which is the derivative of velocity, the acceleration is a positive two meters per second, so the acceleration is always positive. So the acceleration is always positive. So we usually just put a positive all over the place so we know. And then we can draw a little mark at the boundary line here. And over here, the velocity and the acceleration have different signs, so the speed is decreasing. Here they have the same sign, so the speed is increasing. And I uh, says, when is the speed increasing? So it's when the velocity and acceleration have the same sign. So it's going to be increasing from 2 to infinity. And then j, when is it decreasing? j is going to be decreasing from 0, because we always start at 0. We don't have negative time. So it's going to be decreasing when the velocity and the acceleration have opposite signs. So that's going to be from 0 to 2. All right, so we've answered a lot of questions there. And I'm going to show you how to graph this to so you can actually describe the motion of the particle. Uh, but you could describe the motion of the particle just analytically. All right. Um, we could draw a, a little line of motion here. Right down here, I guess. It's going to be the x-axis. Now this might be zero over here. This might be negative one. One, two, three, four, five, something like that. And let's describe the, the motion of the, the particle. So let's say it's, it's moving along the line. So we could, we could call this the x-axis. And where is it going to start? So we just take our position function. And when t is 0, that's going to be our initial position. That's going to be s of 0, so that's going to be 3. So it's going to start here at 3. And then our velocity is going to be negative, so it's going to move to the left until it stops, and it's going to stop at s of 2. Okay, because that's when the velocity is 0, so it's going to stop where? At negative 1. So it's going to stop here. And then it's going to move to the right. So it's moving to the left for the two seconds at two seconds. So for the first two seconds, it moves to the left, starts at negative three, and goes to negative one. It's going to stop. And then it's going to move to the right. So that's the motion of the particle. It's going to start at three, move to negative one, stop, and it's going to move to the right from then on out. So you can just describe the motion like that. You got all this data, it's going to take, make it easy. Now, uh, the next video, I'm going to show you how to do this on the calculator, which is pretty cool.